Hey guys, Boldzoid here, and this is going to be a quick little video to um, explain some things. Yeah, I guess explain some things about the RX480 Red Devil PCB uh, breakdown video. Um, basically, um, yeah, basically what happened is I said the Red Devil's PCB is really, really bad. I stand behind that statement. It is really, really bad if you compare it to the reference card. Because it's, it's significantly weaker than the reference card. And there's no way to dispute that. There just isn't, okay? Um, the, the Red Devil just has a weaker high side fat, weaker low side fat. Um, the memory VRM is about the same. No, I, I think it's also weaker. Maybe? I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to check. Um, but, but the memory VRM doesn't matter. The auxiliary doesn't matter even if it's weaker on the Red Devil. Um, the 0.95 volt is copy pasted off of the reference design, so that's fine. Um, so basically, all of that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, so it's, it's weaker than the reference card, and as far as I see it, it's a bad PCB. Is it dangerous for you to run this card? Well, do you know what the current scale hack is? If you don't know what the current scale hack is, which basically allows you to force an RX 480 to read half the normal power draw, so, uh, you know, s say you do, say the card is pulling 150 watts in real life, what the card thinks, like what the software of the card actually sees it drawing is going to be 75 watts. So if you don't know how to do this hack, or what this hack is, you basically can't blow up an RX 480 Red Devil, unless you try to run Furmark, because Furmark is Furmark, and Furmark special. Um, you can blow up almost anything with Furmark unless it has some really, really strict power limits. Um, and really, really strict power limits, I mean like the GTX 590, if you try to run Furmark on it, will downclock to 500 megahertz or 300 megahertz. It'll basically stay at 2D clocks, if I remember correctly. It'll stay at 2D clocks and it won't clock up. It'll stay at stock, like it'll stay at 2D volts, 2D clocks. It'll just basically act like there's nothing running on it. Because if it actually tries to do anything with Vermark, it's running a risk of blowing out its own VRM. Um, because Vermark is just that bad. Uh, so if you don't run Vermark, you basically have no chance of blowing the card up. And we're talking like, even if you overclock, you have pretty much no chance of blowing the card up. Unless you run the current scale hack. Or you... I mean, if you try to put a really high amount of voltage on the card, in theory, you'd be able to force it to pull enough power, but I do believe the power limit would actually stop you before you actually got anywhere near uh, damaging the VRM. I would not recommend you actually test this out. Okay? Just don't test it. But, yeah. Um, you should be, so basically up to 1.25 volts, which is basically as far as you want to go on an RX 480 on air cooling or water cooling. Just because past that, the scaling is kind of crap, and the power draw just explodes. Um, so basically, 1.25 volts is the maximum voltage you would want to run for gaming. Up to 1.25 volts, the Red Devil should be perfectly fine. And actually, there's a guy on the uh, RX 480 Red Devil PCB breakdown in the comment section who said, you know, he's running, I think, around 1.24 volts with a 14, uh, 1440 megahertz core clock. That scenario is fine. What probably would destroy the card is if you ran the current scale hack and a really high power BIOS and then threw 1500 megahertz core clock on it with 1.3 to 1.4 uh, volts on the core. That would probably be able to both raise the VRM temperatures high enough and push enough current through the VRM to actually destroy it. That's pretty much the only scenario that, you know, I, I can see it happening without needing to use Furmark. I still think it's kind of shitty that the card can't deal with Furmark, because I'm pretty sure if I threw Furmark on the reference card, it would handle it fine, even if I disabled all its power limits and left it at stock clocks, which power color basically says you shouldn't run Furmark on the RX 480 Red Devil, regardless of what, what you know, over how overclocked or not overclocked it is. Um, but I haven't tested that, so, you know, um, wh when I get the chance, or more like when my RX 480 stops being dead, or pretty much dead, half dead, let, let's say it's one foot in the grave, um, 
I'll, 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 I'll try test that. You know, we'll throw for a market the card and I'll, I'll see if it blows up. I, I'm betting it probably won't because the reference PCB looks good enough to me and I will be lifting all of its power limits just to make sure that, you know, we really put the card through hell. Um, the Red Devil, uh, yeah, just, just don't run for a mark on it. If you're a regular gamer, don't put more than 1.25 or maybe even 1.3 volts would probably be okay. Um, but 1.3 volts really doesn't really do much on an RX 480 unless you're chasing benchmark scores because really past a certain voltage, the scaling is like 10 megahertz per 50 millivolts. It's ridiculously bad. It just doesn't scale at all unless you get really, really high-end cooling and actually drop below ambient temperatures or something like that. So basically, under all normal people usage scenarios, you shouldn't really be worried about the card. Uh, if you want to go and benchmark Firestrike, and you want to, or Firestrike Extreme, Firestrike Extreme t tends to actually pull a, a bit more power than Firestrike, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, so, say you want to run Firestrike Extreme or Firestrike, and you're benchmarking, right, and, and you're running like 1500 core clock, and you have water cooling on the card, and, and, and you know, you have the system by the window to try to get the temperatures as low as possible, and you're running like 1.4 volts core voltage, and you've completely taken off all of the card's power limits, so we're talking like running a 400, you know, 300 to 450 watt power limit on the card, then you're probably going to end up with a very dead red devil. Probably. Um, that's pretty much the only scenario where I could see it like actually straight up dying without the use of Furmark. Um, and I'd love to test that out, but as you can probably guess, there's a subscriber number somewhere below this video if you haven't subscribed. And that subscriber number is not high enough. So yeah, I need to get a higher subscriber mark score. Um, before I, I, you know, before I'm able to go and be like, hey, yo, power color, could, could you send me a card to, to blow up, please? But, you know, that's not going to happen. So basically this video is, it's not really as bad as I made it seem like it is. Um, like really, if you're just doing normal gaming, 24-7, boring, lame-ass, non-hardcore overclocking, you're fine. If you're actually doing like hardcore overclocking, like the channel name implies, where's the channel name? That's probably under the video, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably under the video. So the channel name is actually hardcore overclocking. I care about how does the card behave if I try to put it to its limits. And the Red Devil is a card which I feel has no chance of surviving if I tried to, you know, really, really, really get the card as far as it can possibly go. I just don't believe the VRM would take it um, if you let it get hot. If you keep the VRM temperatures really low by, you know, sticking a giant heatsink on the VRM, sticking a giant fan over the giant heatsink that is now on the VRM, and we're not talking like super huge, but say, you know, I'd say like the reference cooler, eh, no, that you probably don't know how big that is. Uh, just, if you get a good heatsink on the VRM and you keep the VRM in that 80 degree range, it should be fine, because in the 80 degree range, the Red, Red Devil still has about 204 amps minimum, minimum current delivery. Because, you know, I, I, use, I use continuous drain current, and I use continuous drain current because it's convenient, and I'm really lazy. And if you want, you can drop a comment down below that for, uh, you know, complaining about how, how, how I'm too lazy and I'll go out and do, I'll do, go out and do all the math required to tell you exactly at what voltage and what frequency you get how much current limit. But as it is, I just feel f comfier just saying, okay, the drain current is here and saying 20 to tw 10 to 20, you know, 10 to 20 to, to 30 percent more than that is still going to be relatively safe. The problem is, if you run a really high power BIOS with the current scale hack and extra voltage, that VRM is probably going to go into the 100 degree range, and once it hits 100 degrees, it will be a lot weaker than it is at 80 degrees. I really don't like the 80 degrees rating, because that one is just like, 
it's realistic for most use cases. Once you start overclocking, VRM temperatures just sort of shoot through the roof. And if that VRM hits 100 degrees, it could derate down to, I'm not going to say 20 amps per phase, because that, that's really low. But if it's at 34, I could totally see it dropping down to 25, maybe 20, 27. You know, 27 to 25 amps per phase, definitely below 30 amps a phase. And you're going to be pushing, say, 200 to 250 watts. Uh, no, 250, no, wait, 200 to 240, 250 amps. You know, there, there's going to be current spikes. If one of those current spikes lasts a little too long, that VRM is going to go. One of the high side MOSFETs is just going to just get destroyed. Is this a normal use case scenario? Nope. <laughs> this is this is almost as bad as running firmware on the card. But you know, it's a scenario that I do a lot. You know, it's like I I I've legitimately been concerned about blowing up my reference R nine two ninety X after an Asus uh, I think X employee, X engineer at Asus. Basically, he told me if you run this BIOS on this card and you give it this much voltage, you're going to burn out the core voltage high side MOSFET. And I'm like, what? Because, <laughs> you know, uh, back then I wasn't as experienced, and I didn't really know, know too much about how, basically, the relationships of the MOSFETs in the VRM. And basically, I, I was just like, R9290X VRM has to do like, you know, 350 amps. There's no way it's going to blow up. Well, it, it does. You can totally melt down an R9290 XVRM if you don't watch the temperatures on it because that thing gets really, really hot, derates heavily, and then when you run the right BIOS on it with no power limit and no, no power controls and no, basically, efficiency thrown out the window BIOS, uh, it burns out a high side. And that basically was like, okay, so I really overestimated how much that VRM can do. And since then, I've sort of started underestimating everything for safety's sake. Um, so the Red Devil, fine for daily usage. I wouldn't use it because I do what I do, right? But if you're just a gamer and you have the Red Devil, good for you. It's one of the best cooled cards out there. Enjoy the card. And just don't try to cop, you know, just don't try to chase 3D Mark records. I guess that that would be like if you're chasing 3D Mark records, you have the wrong card. If you want to play Witcher 3, you have the correct card. It's really that simple. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Whenever next time is. Oh, I know what next time is going to be. It's going to be another PCB breakdown. Probably the Nitro. Yeah, I think. I, no, no, because I still haven't found a good photo of the Nitro. So I'll do the uh, HIS or XFX card because they use the same PCB, so I'm going to get the HIS uh, PCB because that's the one I can get a better photo of, but that literally is the same PCB as on the XFX card. So that's what the next PCB breakdown video is going to be, so uh, see you then. And in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, there's a subscribe button there. I need a better subscriber mark score. And, you know, you probably haven't liked the video, so there's a like button. Press that. Press the freaking like button. And if you would like to help out at AHOC so that we can do things like, say, buy a Red Devil and blow, out, blow it up, there is a Patreon where you can support me with monthly donations so that I can go out and buy graphics cards to blow them up for your enjoyment. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.